to episode two of the Squadcast. I'm Camille. Joining me is Aaron Caboose Coast Brody. I don't know why I want to say Brody. Brody, Elite Bet, and Alex Radpappy. What? Did you say you're not mad if I did? No, it sounds like my math teacher. I'm used to. Oh, uh, Brady, your math <laughs> Brody, teacher. Brady. Brady. I got a, I got a lot of. I think it's I think it's a, a non-native English speaking thing that that they sometimes they don't know how to say the O. So I get oh. I do get I actually get Brody a lot. Brody, um, yeah. can we just call him Brody from here no. on? Brody, how's, <laughs> how's your day going, Brody? Brody. <laughs> no. Yeah. Brody, just, how's I'm your killing day going? <laughs> He's like, he will stop responding from this day out. <laughs> uh, if you are new to the squad cast, well, every Monday we come together and we talk about the topics that are on our minds, on the community minds. So make sure that you share what you want us to talk about all over our social medias at Squad State. Uh, boys and girls, we it, it's been a week since we last met. What have you guys been up to? One thing. Ghost of Shima. <laughs> you calm yourself there because you yes. managed to just get ghost as a topic for today's podcast. So we will be talking about yeah. that a little later. Yeah. So save it. So we know Boost is playing lots of ghosts. What are you guys playing, Braddy and Alex? <laughs> uh I actually started up Paper Mario. That's a that's a really Ooh. nice, pleasant game. Like the original? Oh no no! There's a new one that just came out. The oh, Origami King. The Origami King. Yeah. Yeah. Does it so does it hold a candle to the old ones? Because the old ones were fire. I actually, this is my first Paper Mario game. Oh really? Okay. Mm. Yeah, but I like it. It's. I was just saying this earlier, but it's actually kind of dark. Like the story is kind of dark. Yeah, the, I found <laughs> the Paper Mario game dark. You're very dark. Your soul is dark, Alex. Yeah. you like it. Yeah, I do. I, do like <laughs> I like the chaos. Yeah, I found the Paper Mario games were fun because like they they also they tried to push their um a lot of their dialogue as far as they could without pushing it past, and like having to get a bigger rating because of it. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, no, they're they're uh they're pretty fun in that regard and I feel like the, uh, there was a lot of fourth wall breaking too, which is which is always fun. Like a Paper Mario series are is just the only thing we're going to get close to Mario RPG, so because of that, I love it. I'm actually going to be playing a uh, Paper Mario Origami King this week on stream here at Squad, so uh, everyone can look forward to that as well. And then Alex, we'll have to exchange notes on like what we did <laughs> different and what we did uh, the right way. So we have chat in here. Um, Camille, I see you're representing the best NBA team ever. Yes, yes, I am. That's what's up. Who um, said that? I don't know who said that, but they're they're South speaking the Gamer truth. Said that. Said speaking That's the truth. The truth. Um, we have Kamohara. Hello, Megalino. Hello, and uh, I can't even see that one. You know when the chat has it, it's like dark purple, and it kind of I have like dark mode set up on my mm. uh, Twitch, so it's like really hidden. But I see you guys there in chat, Brody. Uh, what have you been playing this past week besides you, Rocket League? Besides Rocket League, okay. You just need to get better glasses. Um, <laughs> I'm aware of context today. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I felt I actually just on. I felt left out last week. You guys all had your glasses on. I didn't. I finally got <laughs> glasses after oh. a decade. After a decade, to like fifteen years, I finally Dude, got glasses. Yes. Okay, Brody I, I, I has contact. been opposed to glasses since I've known Brody. Okay, he would be at work, forget his contacts, not be able yeah. to read the teleprompter. Oh like, no! Keep a pair of glasses at work. So in this situation, you have them. Nah, man, not getting glasses. I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm not doing it. So, what made you glasses. change your mind? They were really cheap. Okay. So I said, why I, not? That, I that adds up. Pretty expensive. I still don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I've been playing. Uh, I've been trying to crush th through Last of Us uh, actually lately. So okay. I, yeah, it, it it was actually hard at the beginning. No spoilers or anything. Um, it was actually hard at the, at the beginning for me because I felt like I I already. There was one point that I wanted to see flesh out and it it just felt like that's the only thing that was driving the story. But then I've gotten something else that's made me want to find out more about certain things. Um, I think I know exactly what it is. Yes, I yeah. know exactly what you're talking so about. That, that changed what drives the story for me. And to me, I'm like, I sh you know what? I shouldn't have put it past Neil um to to have something like this so i oh my he's, he's a great writer um i should i should have expected this but for some reason i didn't i i was kind of just there was nothing pushing me through the story but now there is so now i've i've uh i've been wanting to crush and play through it uh more so i think i'm nice. almost there 
I think I'm almost done. I, I definitely feel you on that. I've been playing it, or the last few weeks I was playing it for, or last week, I was playing it for squad. Um, and that is one of the things. Everyone was like pushing that game down, how it's like the worst game ever. And I think <laughs> it's a tough game to play at this time where we're stuck in quarantine and it's kind of depressing. It's not like a fun game it's a depressing story but it is emotionally um gonna grab you you may not like what happens in the game but hopefully you pay, play past that point and you get to a point where you're interested again in seeing the story flesh out in another way i'm trying to stay away from spoilers guys <laughs> i'm positive that most of the people that don't like the last of us part two haven't played it yeah yeah yes. they, they probably saw the leaked <laughs> script and then read a bit into it and it's like mm -hmm. nope um, yeah, which is which is silly because like the stuff that people are mad about isn't even like part of why I'm interested in the game. In all honesty, like that that stuff again, it's hard to talk. It's hard to talk so like um, vaguely about this, but um, yeah, no, I, I feel like a lot of people just again they read a certain part and then they're just like, no, I'm out. Screw this. Um, and I will I will say that uh, uh, Last of Us, the first Last of Us, is pretty much a perfect game like as close nothing's ever perfect perfect thank i thought close. you were about to bring us a hot take again i would have been yeah, brody yeah. It's just don't <laughs> take we need like a graphic to come up whenever we think that's gonna happen like, um newsflash yeah but but to me it's as close as almost as close to a, a perfect game that a game can get um it's it, it is so well done so obviously you, you have this this thing that you have to um you know, make another game to like match up to, which is really difficult to do. So I think a lot of people anchor themselves thinking there's going to be another perfect game out there. Um, and even if it falls, even if a little bit short, even if it's like still a four out of five game, their mind is thinking it should have been five. So they're like, you know what? It's actually a three out of five game. And their yeah. their scores are going to be lower because of that. So it, there's a bunch of things that went on with, with those reviews. But um, I definitely think people that were reviewing it like as like ones out of a hundred and stuff is like, yeah, what, what Kabu said, they, they either haven't played it or they, they anchored themselves. And they, they're not giving themselves perspective uh, on the game. Wow. <laughs> Speaking the facts. <laughs> <laughs> facts. Um, chat agrees with you, too. Stealth Gamer says that in their opinion, The Last of Us Part 2 is an 8 out of 10. So, yo, Lawler's in chat. Hello, Lawler. I don't know why I got so excited, but hi, buddy. It's been a while. And no. Oh, yes. Leap, Leap X is a perfect game. No, okay. No, he is not. Lawler, calm down. Their love for each other needs to stop. Um, <laughs> but chat is going here. So why don't we just get started on the topics that we are going to discuss today. We're going to be discussing the state of streaming services in gaming, the Nintendo Direct, Ghost, as well as the best esport right now. Um, but first, let's start with Stadia Connect. So for you guys at home, uh, Stadia, of course, is Google's streaming platform for games. They revealed this, um, and everyone, ex including Brody, was living up to the hype <laughs> of Stadia, um, was looking forward to it when it launched, and it just didn't launch on the level that everyone expected. So recently, they had a Stadia Connect, that announced that there would be new games coming um, to Stadia. And that owners, they also boasted at the fact that owners that were owners since day one have gotten two dozen free games since launch. So, you know, they're really happy about their product. It seems like it. They also introduced the clip to play feature, which is not a new feature. It was actually promised prior um, to when Stadia launched. We're just seeing it roll out now. And pretty much what clip to play is, is that players or anyone streaming on Stadia will be able to put a clip to play uh, link in the description of wherever they're streaming. And viewers could actually just click that link and open up the game right away. They also announced that 2K titles will be coming to Stadia PGA Tour 2021 WWE. We also have Bomberman, Dead by Daylight, Hello Neighbor, Outriders, oh, wow. Sekiro, Hitman 1 to 3, Orcs Must Die 3, uh, and they're all going to be free with Stadia Pro. So you can see now that Google is putting a lot of attention into Stadia. How do you guys feel about the service? Brody, I'm going to actually start with you because you have the service. Oh, I was going to say start with me last because I have the service. Um, oh, okay. Start okay. with me last. <laughs> uh, but no, I can I can go if you want me to. Yeah, um, I want to I I hear a perspective because, okay. um, you know, I feel like 
there's a lot of misconceptions about Stadia. Yeah. Because not a lot of people got at launch because there wasn't a, mm-hmm. there wasn't much of a selling point at launch. To tell so launch. there wasn't a selling point. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is another thing I didn't even hear about. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> there right you there. go. So everyone, everyone uh, that knows me already knows I'm a Google fanboy, but at the same time, I'll also critique. And I'll I'll be the first to say that, yeah, launch wasn't what it should have been. Google is very, very bad at launching new products. I mean, I think they they saw the success, success with Gmail uh, two decades ago and think that it's a good idea to keep doing that where you put it behind a locked thing. Google Plus suffered the same thing where it was a great service, a great social media platform, but they locked it behind having to be invited to it. Um, and that becomes a problem because why am I going to be on it if my friends aren't on it because they don't have invites, right? So the the same thing kind of went along with Stadia where it was this limited release that you had to spend like $200 on to get into. And it it just, that's a weird way to release something. Like that's the release. That wasn't like a pre-release. That's the release. Yeah, and of course, four months down the road, people are going to start forgetting about it because they don't have it and they haven't been able to experience it. And it was rocky at the beginning. You know, there was a lot of input delay. I'm going to tell you right now that almost it's almost negligible. I won't play competitive games on it. Um, uh, and like, but I, I'll play Destiny on it. You know, it's something that is a little more casual. I can aim just fine on it. Uh, the input delay is no different than playing with an Xbox on a 60 inch TV. Um, it's the, if you're on your PC playing, it's the same amount of input delay. Um, I, can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't do the Xbox on a 60 inch, you know, Com- competitively. I it. Yeah. Competitively. It's a bad, that's not good. Right. Yeah. But yeah, for yeah. Other games. Um, it's just fine. And um, True. Uh, actually True. my, my uh, there's a game called Thumper. Uh, my girlfriend's been playing um, and she's crushing it, getting high scores, like global high scores on Thumper, which is a rhythm game. So that's, mm-hmm. that's a testament to how good the input delay has gotten. Um, it's game. almost, yeah, it's almost neg- negligible. Yeah, Thumper, Thumper's a great game. You should check it out. But uh, again, so when it comes, sorry. When, when, when I was going to say, like, when it comes to, like, a, a game like Sekido where it's, you know, dodging and all that stuff, you yeah. have to be, like, pretty precise time. Would you say playing it on Stadia, you'll not have too many troubles? Uh, or... Again, I, I, don't th- I don't think it'll be that much of a problem because okay. um, if, you're, if you've already played it and you're used to the input delay, maybe. Um, but if it's just like going and playing a new game on a new system that you've never experienced before, you don't have muscle memory for the input delay yet. So it's no problem. Like, again, in, in some competitive games, I'll use Rocket League as an example. Um, you've seen high level players play on consoles on TVs that have input delay because that's just what they're used to. Now they get faster and better when they go to PC where there's that minimal input delay. But they can do it just fine because they don't have that previous experience of it. So if you're playing Stadia, especially casual, I think Stadia is beautiful for casual games and especially single player games, um, uh, the, like story based games. I think that you can take on your own pace is really fun. I am glad to see that they're starting to add more multiplayer games because it just it does sometimes feel a bit barren out there. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I'm always alone. And most of the games I have on here are single player games. I do want to try a multiplayer game with some other people. <clears throat> PUBG is just filled with bots because there's just not enough people on the platform. Um, and so, it, again, the launch was rough, but it is a great platform. In all honesty, it almost just makes me more excited for xCloud, um, for uh, Microsoft streaming service, um, because if they yeah. can do it right. I, I like the streaming service. I really do like it. And the fact that well, there's yeah. very minimal input delay and the games do look clean, clean and crisp um, is a testament to the tech we have. But if someone can launch it better, go for it. I, I'd like a service like this. Um, it doesn't have to be Stadia. But right now, in my eyes, Stadia is one of the best ones. Um, and the fact that you can make a free account right now and you just buy the games or you pay, again, like 13 bucks Canadian or something, um, which is like 10 bucks US um, to to get access to to these these games. Everyone. Not free, obviously. You're paying a subscription. Yeah. But you get access to these games. My Like my library is um, pretty huge. Uh, pretty huge right now uh, because of that, as you said. And they're, they're not small games either, right? No, like there's I- some big games on there. And I remember when you got Stadia because Google Fanboy over here brought it into, mm-hmm. well, didn't bring it into work. You don't have to bring anything, which is crazy. Yeah, you just, yeah. about Stadia. He just logged in and then was able to launch Destiny. And I remember testing it out and the input was very minimal. Um, it was, I think it's gotten better now. It's gotten better um, even. Yeah. But I was so shocked at how effortlessly it launched and how you were just able to play like you're freaking playing on your PlayStation 4. It was just amazing. And to have that across all these different devices, 
is amazing. But again, with streaming services as a whole, whether it is Stadia or xCloud, it all depends on that internet connection, which, you know, let's put that aside right now because you mentioned xCloud and xCloud is pretty much saying they, they haven't given all the devices, but xCloud is saying that you're pretty much going to be able to do, pretty much do the same thing as Stadia um, to the fact that you're able to stream from any device, right? And pick mm-hmm. up from where you left off onto any device. So if I'm playing on my TV or playing on my Xbox, I'm going to be able to then pick up my phone and stream from there from my last save point. The thing though, and you mentioned it, Brody, is Xbox seems like they're trying to have a stronger launch than Stadia. They recently announced Mm -hmm. that xCloud will be actually a part of Game Pass, which is insane. It's going to be a part of the ultimate Game Pass. So right now, Stadia goes for $11.99 a month for Stadia Pro, and you get some free games with that, but you still have to pay. Game Pass Ultimate is for $15 a month, okay? And you get a library of games, library of games. Mm -hmm. And now that they're adding that xCloud service, I'm kind of saying that $15 a month may be the better buy. Yeah, well, the, the, in all honesty, it's, it's such a weird, I think this would throw people off about Stadia is that, you know, you, you buy the game and it's not, cross platform yet um, i think they're they're working on adding that so you have if you already own a game on steam you have to buy it again on this even if you have the free version um so it's 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 weird right it's weird for people whereas if you just pay again get you get a bunch of games for your subscription um that you can then play anywhere xbox i think or microsoft sorry is go- going a really smart route about it because that game pass to me is already a steal um yeah. it, it is a it's fantastic an service yeah purchase um and uh, being able to get xCloud with that is, I think, going to make themselves a real big competitor to Stadia. I think Stadia is probably going to under, we're probably going to see a lot of changes once other competitors really come around to to it. But um, as for Stadia, I don't have any plans on canceling it right now. Um, to me, it's still a service that I use. Um, there's some games I've been playing uh, West of Loathing that just jumped on there as one of the free games for subscribers. Mm-hmm. And it's a game that I never would have experienced before, but oh my God, am I having fun with it. It is such a, a fun uh, little game. So um, I'm getting exposed to a lot more games now because of Stadia. So in my eyes, that's worth it in itself. But teach their own. You know, Stadia might not be be worth it for you, right? So, it just... Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Go ahead, go ahead. I was saying, is Stadia just like a, like a Steam? No, so it's... Sta- Stadia is a streaming platform. Have you ever heard of OnLive before or PlayStation Now? It's the it's, same. It's thing kind of as like that. Netflix, but for gaming, right? Where you're able oh, to okay. stream different titles from their servers, right? So you actually don't have to download the game. Um, PlayStation Now has it where you, there are games that you could stream, but there are also games that you could download. Oh. So, um, you know, with Stadia, Stadia was kind of that thing that everyone was looking to to be the holy grail of streaming services and it just didn't live up to that it may after you know a year of launch maybe it will when we look back at it next year um but right now it isn't so uh, i see in chat that there are a few people that are saying that or crown around actually is saying that they'd rather die than ever buy a gaming <laughs> console. So like, that's, that's a good point though. Like for, well, I wouldn't say rather dying, but it's a good point. <laughs> yeah. if you're not that's a, a great point. Gamer, right? <laughs> but maybe you play on PC, but want to get access to some of those console titles. This is where streaming services may be mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. especially right. when you're looking at something like X cloud Ult- uh, with a uh, game pass ultimate, where you have it accessible through your PC as well. Then I mean, XCloud may be the perfect service for you if that's the route you want to go. So you don't own these games, right? Well, I mean, technically, you don't. Uh, you still have to buy them, right? Many of them. So yeah, yeah. You, you're you have to, but you pay for them, so you you own you own the license to play them. But most gaming services, even Steam, you don't technically own the games. Right, right, right. But the point is that that I guess what I was trying to ask is like, if I want to go play Sekiro on. Stadia, I have to buy the game. Yeah, unless it's coming out for free with the with your subscription. Pro with the subscription. subscription, okay. But like on PlayStation Now, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, like Brody mentioned, you have it the streaming option, but you also yeah. have it to download. So they may have like I think they have Watch Dogs 
two available right now until November of this yeah. year, right? So, so they'll let you know when they're taking it off their platform. It's just that I, I look at Stadia. I look at like streaming games in general, the way that I look at uh, VR. It's a cool concept. Um, I'm sure like when you test it out, you know, the way that you were saying, Camille, when you tested it out, loading up Destiny, that whole seamlessness to it is cool. But it's just like, it's just not there yet. It's not mm. enough for me to be like, all right, here's my $200. Give me a Stadia, you know? And I feel like especially in this scenario, because they had such a rocky launch and because it was like, let's be honest, it was almost disastrous. Um, it almost might just be too little too late at this point. Mm for whatever they're planning to do with Stadia. And I just, I don't think there are enough people interested for it to turn a profit for Google. But then again, Google, they like, they make money hand over fist. So if they so want to just, keep, yeah, you true. know, if they want to just keep pumping money into Stadia and just let it exist and let it be there until it inevitably turns them a profit, I can see that happening. Um, but I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, especially with the next gen of consoles coming out uh, later this year, I don't see anybody, uh, at least in terms of general consumers. You know, if you if you ask ten people on a line, ten out of ten of them would be like, "Yeah, I'll get the PS5 or the Xbox Series X before I get a Stadia." Yeah. So, um, if you guys want, this is the ultimate way to test if it's for you. And this is the thing: is that I don't think cloud gaming it does not replace localized no. gaming at all, yeah. and it, it, it never will. Um, so, I think you need to approach it like this is it targets a different type of people. And I think, again, chat was mentioning it is good. It's like, I don't want to buy a console, but I want to play this game. Maybe it's on a streaming service. I buy the service for a month and, and then cancel it after that. It's still cheaper than buying a game in a console. Um, mm -hmm. And you get to experience that story. Um, so if you guys want, um, and I'm not being paid to do this, go to Stadia <laughs> right now, stadia.google.com. You can try and sign up. You get a free month of, of pro. A, you get the pro account for a month. Um, and then you just cancel before the month is up and it, it doesn't charge you. Um, so because the, the next month is then when it would charge you. So you get a free month, just cancel uh, it before it is and test it out um, and see it for yourself. I mean, that's the ultimate way to see if it works for you, right? Is to test it out. So stadia.google.com, you get a free month of pro, try it. That's true. I mean, yeah, a free month is not bad. Hmm? Brody, can you flip your camera? Can we see the Google people that are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where's, <laughs> where's the paycheck? Yeah, Where's no, the no. paycheck? <laughs> but you do bring up a good point. It is, uh, I think Stadia realized that they made a mistake at launch. They launched on false promises. It wasn't the product anyone wanted. Um, and it took a while to get where it needed to be to even be uh, what people would be interested in trying out. So now they're allowing that free trial. But important. Other services, other services also allow free trials. So you could get a free trial of Game Pass Ultimate. You could also get a free trial of uh, PlayStation Now. So I mean, try them all. Is it good enough? Is it good enough to redeem them? I, I just don't know. Um, chat was asking: Is Game Pass Ultimate still going to be fifteen dollars? Yes. That is something that Xbox did. It will still remain fifteen dollars, and it's also going to include um, Xbox Live as well yeah see Down game pass is friggin awesome you know like there's there's just no way you can deny the crazy deal you get out of game pass and the fact that they're adding in some of their newer games in there too like didn't they recently confirm halo infinite would be on game pass or maybe not recently but isn't that it's gonna it, be yeah, a thing yeah, it's yeah. gonna be uh, like yeah, that's crazy headline. that is yeah. crazy to me uh you're, so you're I, getting, I don't know how they're able to afford to do that like to tell you the truth they just <laughs> well, i don't compute that, I guess that's why you, you know I what it is. These companies, but that's I think insane. in the case of Microsoft, it's the same with like Google. Like I was saying, where they just they make money hand over fist, so it's yeah. like just just throw the money out, and then hopefully at some point it makes you a profit. And I feel I, like that's probably what Microsoft is doing with Game Pass. I think you guys also extremely underestimate how many people forget to cancel subscription services. <laughs> yes, um, it's true. <laughs> to me, honestly, it's true. that is true. You make an excellent point. It's free money of people not using your server bandwidth, right? Like yeah. it's just it's just literally free money. So I, I feel like that's why we see literally everything going to subscription services now is is because of that. Um, so yep. I, I, here's the thing: down the road. If it's better, and I like the idea, again, of being able to download games, why not give the option uh, as well? I, I I may as well, I may end up switching um, over to xCloud if it's better. I'm, it's not like I'm beholden to this. I think 
Again, though, it's, it's a good idea. Test it out. See if your internet works. Um, I'm just worried about the, the input delay. We'll see. Cause I, I know, yeah. um, I know Stadia does some, has some really cool tech behind it. Um, and maybe Stadia will continue to exist for, for people who stream on YouTube, because again, that integration with YouTube of having your viewers being able to jump right into your game without launching it, just boom, click it. Now they're playing with you. Um, the save states having a level being like, I can't beat this level. Try it guys. And it loads them in exactly where you were with all the stats and weapons and everything you had, and they can test it. Um, that's, there's some really cool tech behind it. Um, yeah. And I think it'll still survive, but um, you know, for me, what I need, maybe I will. I, I there's a good chance I'll switch to to XCloud. Um, mm-hmm. But hey, it doesn't hurt to try them all. Um, they all offer something different. Well, hopefully, Google is not investing all this money. And also, they did say alongside Stadia, they're going to be focusing on their own studio to make games exclusive for Stadia. And they teamed up, they're teaming up with Ubisoft to kind of help develop these games, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like we have to see more of Stadia. Maybe mm-hmm. next year we'll all be talking about it. But to wrap up, oh, before we wrap up, I'm just going to uh, put this comment in. Crown Around said, I have like a $10 sub <laughs> to a mobile <laughs> game. And every month when it comes out of my bank account, I shed a single tear and promptly <laughs> forget exactly. all about it again. Why well, they do it. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But to wrap up our thoughts on streaming services as a whole, what would we want to see from the ultimate streaming service? Well, I want I want to hear it from uh, honestly from Alex because like again, this is <laughs> it's cool to get that perspective. I I talk a lot and I feel like I've given my thoughts and I already know what I want. But what is there anything again? I asked this with the Xbox question. Is there anything that would like like I mean you're signing up for it, but like what would you need? Uh, well, I liked what you said about how, did you say that someone else can load up your save file and like try to try out their, yeah, that's a, uh, I, the thing that they're, um, in the Camille's talking about the whole, being able to click jump right play. into things click to, to play. Click play. Oh, the yeah. save, play. I think the save it. state thing was also launched with that. Um, I'm it, not too it, sure about the save state, but I believe the click to play is just like, if you're streaming the game and you're watching, you want to try it like, and your viewer wants hmm. to try it out. They just click that link and it launches yeah. the game immediately. So it's either a yeah, feature that really they cool. just added or a feature that will be being added. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, it's added now. So that's something that interests you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, hearing about this for the first time, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty <laughs> excited for it. And I mean, Leaf Cut or Brody or Brody now, as Bro- we call it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of sold it for me. We're like, oh, okay, I think I'm going to try this. Like I was typing it up while you guys were <laughs> talking about it. Like I kind of want to try it. That's I've never even thought about the fact that like a Netflix for games, it's a really cool way to try out these games because yeah, there's just so many things out there. And then to have to buy a console for each different game and then buy the game itself, which is like what 60 to 70 bucks now. Mm -hmm. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's crazy. Then you don't even have time for them. So at least this way you can kind of try things out, see what you like. And, and then that really cool click to play thing is, is really awesome too. I think it could open up ways, um, for people to play games together because i i've always wondered like why playing games together hasn't been uh like a big thing anymore like co-op games or mm-hmm. or just you know just the the natural like playing with your friends like there's no couch games anymore but maybe with something like this you can just play a game with your friend maybe it's not like literally the same game but you know like playing the same game but on a different tv or something and then you guys just like play it together which i think is really cool yeah i mean for me my ideal thing i guess would be like um i guess the best way i could put it it's like think of like a box right like an xbox if i if you would (laughs) um that doesn't have a disc port and then i could just buy any game that i want through a store available in this xbox are we, that's are we, that's what I would like. Are you referencing? <laughs> are you referencing Steam boxes right now? Well, oh wait, <laughs> hold on. Okay, new idea. Imagine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. Oh my god. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's just the the point I'm trying to make is I guess just that the, the whole streaming thing. It just isn't for me with the games. I just don't think it's there yet. Um, but it's it's an interesting. It's a cool concept. It's cool tech. Uh, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. I'm just right now where it is. I can't see myself investing money into it. That is fair. 
Yeah, I think we all agree streaming services are definitely in the early stages, so we'll have to keep an eye out to see how they develop and if they'll become a trend for gamers going forward.